Hi guys, this is Nadia from Ibali Crafts and today I want to show you how to create a flat bed setting for a double-sided pendant. I quite often do kits for my um, videos and PDF tutorials, so pop over to my shop and see if there's anything that tickles your fancy. Um, if you want to share your work or you've got any questions, feel free to join my Facebook group, which is called Why I Wrap and Jewelry Artists um, Worldwide. Obviously, don't forget to subscribe because I upload new stuff all the time. Right, so let's get started. So there's a list of materials to begin with, and this is how we're going to do the piece. So we're going to start off by creating the base. And for that, we're going to cut our wire links. Now, obviously, you need much longer wire than this. It's just much easier for me to demonstrate to you on shorter pieces of wire for the setting. So use the gauges that I've and the lengths that I've shown um, and this is the technique. So I'm starting off by wrapping the legs of the wires together, which makes it easier to, to hold and straighten these out. So I lay four of the wires side by side to start off with. And I'm taking my 0.426 gauge wrapping wire weaving wire and I'm wrapping it around as tightly as I can around these four wires just three or four times to bind it and then I'm going to pick up the half round now this is quite a thick gauge 1.3 you could use thinner but I prefer to use the thicker gauges because it just gives a bit more integrity everybody does it differently and this is what I like to use for for the sort of the size stone um so just try and see what works for you so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to wrap around the half round and the square wires about three times and then i'm going to bend these half round wires upwards and this creates like an open section that's what it looks like so far <coughs> And then what we're going to do next is this is only for this setting. You don't if you want to create a flat bed setting on its own, you don't need to do this. So the next step is we pick up another square wire and I'm going to lay it by the top side and I'm going to wrap around it once like so. And I'm going to move across the four square wires we initially had. Um, and going to wrap around this single square wire once so this is going to create like a, um, a separate section you'll see why I'm doing this later in the design so now I'm going to pick up another square wire and I'm going again wrap around it once like so and then I'm going to move across wrap around all four wires and then pinch the, the weaving wire and flatten it out so that it's nice and tidy and push the weaves together this is quite a bit fiddly at this stage obviously you don't have um, much to hold the wires in place so I'm going to wrap around this one more time so in essence what we are doing is we are binding the two outside wires to the central wire so that it has an attachment point so these are basically anchor points to the main weave and we are not going to weave around the outside wires all the time so once we've attached them like we did now we're going to wrap around the four central square wires about 12 or 13 times um, and the amount of wraps we're going to do depends entirely on the cabochon size we're going to place on top of that so if your flat uh, bed cabochons or your flat back cabochons are bigger than what i have you need to make this weave a little longer it's just supposed to be long enough to house the gemstone you'll see what i mean in a second so we've continued and just make sure that you flatten out the weave so i've got some awesome um, bent nose pliers which really work well for this sort of application and I'm just squeezing the weave down gently to flatten out um, flatten out the, the wraps we've just done so that the stones will sit nice and tight. 
that's what it looks like so far so good so next I'm going to pick up a cabochon so I'm placing you can see that the, the size of the stone is roughly about the, the amount of width we've created with the wrap so now this is the fiddly bit so we're gently folding the half round wire over the stone and everybody again does this differently work out how it works for you this is the best method for me and um, the way i do it i fold the half round over the stone then gently inwards again towards the middle so i'm crossing my half round wires all the while holding my thumb over the stone so that it can't slip and then i am putting a bend just after the stone into the wire pushing these together and then i'm going to take a pair of pliers and push the two half rounds down for me this creates an indent where i can then wrap my weaving wire around the half rounds and the square wires all at the same time um, and this is the method that works best for you obviously this is a, a setting where you have to try and see what works for you try different methods of folding the half round wire everybody does it differently um, and this is the method that works for me so i'm going to push the weaving wire once i have wrapped it and adjust the setting if necessary uh, and i'm going to pull the half rounds and this will flatten it would this works better with thinner half round um, but it also works for the 1.3 um, 16 gauge so that's the first stone attached and what we're going to do now is just repeat what we've done before so i'm going to go around all four of the wires and i'm wrapping around the outermost wire once and then i'm coming to go i'm going to go across the top of all four wires and wrap around it a second time and this is just to give it enough strength so i would actually recommend doing it a third time i didn't do three only two and i found that three is probably better so if you do three reps you've got more of a security when doing the stone setting with it later when we go around the actual stone so what i'm going to do now is just continue what we've done before so we've attached the square wires and what we're going to do now is repeat what we have done before and we are going to create um, a bed for the next stone to sit on so all we're doing is wrap around the four um, central wires and create a new bed and then we're going to repeat this process until we have enough of a length to go around the stone so that's what I have around the stone. So we need to make sure that <clears throat> the setting is longer than the actual stone. Because when we are going to fold it, um, the, it'll need more, more distance to travel around the stone. So you need a bit of extra length, maybe one, one extra stone setting um, to go around the stone. And once we've done that, we are going to shape the setting. So this is just a rough sort of shape so that it fits around the stone um, and the tension from folding it will seat the stones even further so it's a great way to keep any loose settings and tighten them up so it will set it a slightly better and we're going to bend away the half round wires to prevent anything from loosening that will stop um, the wires from slipping out as we work so once you've initially shaped it we're going to tighten up the setting and we're going to do this by pulling the top together there you go so that's the setting roughly done and it sort of wedges the stone in place again half rounds out the way And also the side square wires 
we're not going to use them what we're going to do next is the central four wires on each side we're going to put a slight bend in them and this is so that when we are closing off the top of the bezel um, they will kind of line up parallel to each other I think I've bent them a bit much but you'll see what I'm mean just now so place your stone inside it and just make sure that there's a very tight fit around your stone like so and I give it a bit of a push and that will seal off the setting around the stone like so don't worry if it falls out yet we're going to um, fix this just now so next is a bit of half round wire so I've used um, 0.8 which is your 20 gauge and I'm leaving a little bit of a tail on one side so it doesn't really matter we're not going to use this end so just long enough so that you have something to hold on to we're going to wrap around all eight of the central wires only so all the other wires need to be bent out so just the, the eight central wires from the setting and place your stone once you've done a couple of wraps and we're going to wrap the half round wire around all eight about three or four times so just place it as close to the stone as you can and i'm pushing the wrap down towards the stone for an extra tight fit so far so good so next uh, get a hard surface i like to use my block for this and this helps you to to give you a bit of a hard back what we're going to do is place the stone you can, we're going to do this from both sides but i'm starting at the back here um, and what we're going to do the wires on each side that we have attached earlier um we're going to bend these inwards and this is why we haven't put any weave around this area because we're going to use it to bezel the stone in essence so we're going to bend these wires in and don't worry if it doesn't look too pretty this is going to be covered um so just take your time with that it's going to be a little bit um stubborn to move at this point so just manipulate it until it moves so sometimes the setting gets in the way so i'm just pushing it out with something thinner and then all we're going to do is shift the wire inwards enough to keep the stone from falling out we're going to do this from both sides so just push your wire and it gets a little bit more flimsy once we get towards the top so don't do the last two at the top So just fold it in and that's what it looks like so i'm going to do exactly the same from the front as well from both sides and this will seat the, your stone and stop it from falling out so obviously we're going to repeat this from the front and then carry on <clears throat> so now we've done both sides and i've got my wire separated out so i've got my eight central wires and i'm going to take three of those and bend these forward so best to take the two front ones and then obviously a third one from further back and we're going to um, separate these out you can only use two if you want to I just wanted a bit of a wider bail so I've used three and don't worry about the unsightly bit where they splay out at the bottom and um, we're not going to see that later so just make sure that the wrap with the half round is nice and tidy so now we're just going to continue until the half round is used up or until you have enough of a bail that you're happy with so just keep going until you've got all done so that's all the half round attached i'm just pushing down the weave and flattening out um the, the sort of wrapping to give it a bit more of a refined look and then the next step is to bend the bell and obviously we need to attach it so 
there will be enough of a gap between the top of the stone and the bezel and we can feed one of the wires through the middle if not use a needle or so to create a bit of space pull it through and this is the bezel we're going to take that one wire and fold it back towards the back somewhere in between all of the wires and we are just going to cut it like so and use that small ending to to um to fold and wrap into into the the actual stone bezel itself just enough to tuck it away so it won't come undone and just keep working until you're satisfied with the look next we're going to take wires from the right hand side so now this is a very organic setting so you need to see how you would like it to seat so i'm just going to take two of the wires from the right doesn't matter which and we're going to fold these over and i'm going to create a little loop on the right so this is an anti-clockwise loop and this is just to start off the designs so again very organic so you're going to have to decide how you would like the loops to sit that's what it looks like so far so next i'm going to grab hold of the one of the other wires and i'm going to go in a clockwise motion around all of the wires coming down on the right and i'm just going to place it somewhere near the bezel and then i'm going again in the opposite direction so this is a anti-clockwise move to create another swirl and that's what it looks like so far so once we've done that we're going to grab hold of the wire on the inside and we're going to create a little swirl um as i said earlier this is a very organic sort of look you know so you're going to have to decide how you want it to look you don't have to create a swirl there i'm just going through um the whole front of the pendant so that you can actually see how i do this sort of design and no two designs like this will actually ever be the same so um, because it's obviously very organic it depends on the lay of the wire and such um so once we've done that created the loop and we're going to now cut off just enough wire so that we have enough of a length to create the swirls and i like to thin out so i take my round nose pliers and i like to squeeze the, the tip of the wire where i'm going to create a swirl so that it makes a point and it narrows down the the swirl ending which looks much better in my opinion anyway so next we're going to go back down to the bottom and we're going to take the remaining wire and we're creating a swirl a clockwise swirl and make sure it's as round as possible and the reason being for that is we are going to take a four millimeter gemstone or cubic zirconia whatever you have available and this the round needs to be just big enough so that it can sit under um the outside of the stone and the stone doesn't fall through and the next step is we're going to fold the wire around the gemstone and lift it up just enough every sort of rotation so that it slowly sits over the um outside of the stone and wedges it in place essentially that's what it looks like so far so good next we're going to create a little swirl at the bottom so we're going to repeat the same process um, i leave about a centimeter for this length and i am again as before squeeze the end to make it finer so just fold the wire the way you're, you're happy with it's um dependent on what you like it to look like 
you can go different directions longer wire shorter wire up to you as always we're going to squeeze and twist at the same time So use different tools in between. There we go. So that's that. So I'm happy with how that looks. And then the next step is to take the second wire from the top and we're going to create some more detail there. So this is an anti-clockwise. You can make the um the loop small if you want with tools so if the initial shape isn't quite the way you want it to you can easily adjust it with a pair of pliers just make sure obviously you don't mar the wires at this point because copper wire is quite soft especially with a square if you squeeze it too much it tends to mark quite easily uh, which is not a train smash you can always um you can always erase some of the marks with polishing and sandpaper so we're going to create a swirl just like we did earlier cutting some of the ends off so if it's too long to begin with you can adjust this at a later stage once again remember to thin out your tip So happy with that. So next we're going to use a bit of binding wire. So for this I've used thinner wire, which is your 0.328 gauge. Obviously it doesn't have any sort of structural um, reasons. So it just needs to bind the wires um, to the frame. So just attach them wherever you can so you don't have any loose ends um, at all that can get bent out of shape when your pen is worn. So next we're going to take a square wire from the other side, from the top, and we're going to create a loop right near the top. Pick up another 4mm stone, or bigger stone if you want, or smaller, doesn't really matter. And like we did before, we're going to trap the stone in place by bending the square wire around it. So just take your time with that. There's another tutorial I've made for this, but it's pretty much the same technique. Um, you basically coil the wire around the stone, and as you're coiling, you kind of lift it up slightly so that it's ever higher going around the stone. So once you've done that, we're going to pick up another square wire from the left-hand side, and we're going to repeat what we've done on the other side. Again, as I said, organic design to see what works for you what i do sometimes if i'm not too sure how something will look i cut a couple of practice lengths of wire and i i trial out to see what it looks like before i go to the actual thing so next another swirl near the bottom and just as before we're going to trap the stone in place as i said earlier so as you're twisting make sure that the wire goes up at a slight angle so that you are able to fold the wire over the stone and keep going until you are satisfied that it's seated nice and tight that's what it looks like so next we're going to shape a little swirl so it's quite important that you tie down these settings obviously they're vulnerable to being bent out of shape so I always make sure when I have made these settings that I bind them securely to the frame so create a little swirl and the last step is to trim off some of the wires at the bottom and I'm going to once again Take my runner's pliers. Remember to squeeze the end to create a nice fine tip. Like so. And then obviously I'm going to fold this in and create a little swirl 
just like we did at the beginning it, it helps usually when you pre-shape the wire into the direction you want it to go in rather than bending it from straight if that makes sense because the curls will look more natural that way so you can adjust until you're happy and then roll the swirl until you're satisfied with the look that's it so place it against the stone and that's what it looks like so far so good so obviously next is to take a piece of wire i tend to reuse wire from the other side you can cut a new piece doesn't really matter i just use wire from the other side and then i am going to um cut and trim where necessary so i'm just feeding it through and attaching it's just very important that you attach all of these loose ends so that nothing can snag and break so i'm happy with that and next the wire that we have used earlier to attach the stone near the bale we're going to bend this upwards and what we're going to do now is we we follow the initial two wires we have wrapped around the, the bale and we're going to take the loose end and wrap it around the bale once just enough so that the loose end can be tucked away <clears throat> And this will secure the stone nicely to the pendant. So that's that. So that's the whole front done. So obviously you can cut the wires off at the back if you wanted to cut them all off. Or you can recreate the back like I've done here with some of the wires. So trim off the, all the wires once you're done. And the most important bit is with the half wound wires is to tack them in back on itself. So that the last two stones on each side can't slip out. So make it quite tight so there's no chance of them moving. And that's that. So that's the whole pendant done. You can now uh, polish it up and uh, put in liver sulfur if you want. Um, and that's that. So don't forget to subscribe. Um, I'd love it if you visit my Instagram, Facebook or TikTok. And um, don't forget about my Facebook group if you would like to share your work and be part of our community. And lastly, obviously, if you'd like to buy kits, wire, some of my art, visit my website or Etsy shop to see what I've got available. And that's that. So thanks for watching and hope to see you soon.